Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Torch Snubbers Podcast. I am your host, Colin Connors. With me, as always, is my wonderful co-host, Alicia Garza. Hello. Also joining us tonight, the very beautiful Stephen Lehman. Hi. The always insightful Patrick Sullivan. hey yo. The boy next door, Jack. Hi there. And some guy named Ben. That's me. All right. So we have a lot to digest and to talk about and just to gesticulate. It was two hours of Survivor tonight. Oh my goodness, the season is finally starting to whittle down. Anyways, let's just jump right into it. And I'm going to talk with Steven. Steven, guess which Survivor player I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, would it be the person who also has my name, Steven? No, it's Kelly Wentworth. Okay. Oh. So, <laughs> we're seeing a lot of, and just for a few travels, our listeners, That's this fine. kind of conversation is going to span both episodes because it was kind of a two for one. And to be frank, a lot of the questions we would ask after the first episode were answered by the second. So, we're going to try to be as efficient as possible covering this. But anyway, Steven, a lot of what we saw from Kelly Wentworth tonight seemed to reek of a very positive winner's edit. And not only that, she seems to be getting a great narrator's edit edit as well what is going on with that i actually think kelly i don't think she's winning i think she's making it very very far like close to the end like a fan favorite just missed out because she had that confessional i think it was either i can't remember whether it was uh last week's episode or the prior but she said verbatim you know that she was growing and that she was getting to do things that she didn't do last time and i think that might be what her story is more about than actually winning so i think she's definitely shown that she's grown as a player and that she's been able to do things she wasn't able to do in san Juan del sur but i don't know if that's going to translate to winning okay does anyone else want to hop onto the kelly train jack way back in san juan del sur all of those years ago you were in fact a kelly fan what do you make of her in this iteration? Well, I'm still a Kelly fan, and I'm glad that my early prediction a few years ago is paying off now. That <laughs> Colin gives a very snarky look at. I just think she's playing, she's unhinged. Um, she doesn't deal with her father anymore, and she's having fun out there, and she's playing the game I think that she wanted to play coming into the season. So I think she's she's definitely like in her element now, and she's definitely thriving. Jack, when you said unhinged, at first I thought you meant like crazy, and I was like, yeah. I feel like she's pretty, pretty level-headed. <laughs> she like well, broke free from She's like, broken yeah. free Well, she from is no her... Abby Maria. Now, Patrick, I'm going to talk with you about, um, fuck, my, well, my notes are just a giant mess. Okay, Patrick, I want to talk with you about the, lo- <clears throat> the lovely Tasha Fox. Okay. When oh, Kelly Wigglesworth has voted out. Tasha voted in the minority. However, you saw her quickly jump back with Stephen and Jeremy. And now, once again, she seems to be on the outs at the end of the uh, most recent episode. What the hell is going on with her arc and story? It's, it's voting blocks. That's the, that, that's, <laughs> that's the thing of this season is voting blocks. It's, there's no alliances, and it keeps on – they reference it a million times this episode. But uh, you just want to be on the right side of the numbers, and she thinks, you know – where the right side of the numbers are going to be. So, uh, yeah, you can get scorned or whatever, but there's uh, you, you want to be in the voting block. And she said that she wanted to give him one more chance, um, and she did, and yeah. Okay, you just said voting blocks. Does anyone want to jump on that, that kind of grenade <laughs> of Survivor? Because, um, Stephen, go ahead. And then I'm also going to jump to Ben, so Ben, prepare something smart to say. It's not like the term voting box hasn't been thrown around before. These people are just trying to reinvent the wheel, I think. like mm-hmm. It's not as if there hasn't been shifting allegiances every week and before. It, they're, I feel like they're trying to rationalize their erratic gameplay, which is fine. But don't I, I just don't like that they're trying to make it sound new and hip and cool. Like, voting blocks like, was a thing almost in like Africa and Marquesas. Mm-hmm. Like, don't, don't think y'all are special. Okay. And <laughs> like, it's also been so shifty, like, more than most past, which has made it really exciting. And so the voting blocks have been more prominent in this season than like a past season where like say where they begong someone. That's true, but I mean let's look at Kagiyan. There were kind of voting blocks within that. But sure. Jack, I guess what I want to ask you is are these voting blocks a byproduct of like amazing gameplay or just a byproduct of the fact that there's so many crazy interpersonal relationships between everyone? And Ben, I'm still coming for you. I think more so it's that everyone's coming here to play and they're all trying to satiate their own selfish needs. So people aren't just going to go along with their own, with someone else's plan. So if everyone's trying to do their own thing, things are always going to change week by week. Everyone's one thing I, mm-hmm. Yeah, one thing I wanted to say is in season one, Richard Hatch used the term voting block. 
So this is not a new thing this season. Mm. It has been around since the very first season. It's all these second chance losers trying to feel special. Ben, what's your take on the whole voting block dynamic? Well, I feel like for like survivor fanatics like us, voting blocks is not an unusual thing at all. We're accustomed to doing what's best in self-preservation. But for these players, a lot of these players don't come on with the full perspective that a lot of us survivor fans do and we'll stick to a solid crew rather than moving and shifting according to what's in their best individual interest. And I think that's something that with the second chance season, it's coming on a lot more because they're realizing they do need to move on with what their best interests are rather than fixated on a crew of four, five, or six. But what in any, I want everyone to kind of chime in on this, but wouldn't the fact remain that if two episodes from now, Jeremy, Spencer, and let's say Joe form a three-person alliance and that goes to the end, wouldn't that mean that alliances are backing the gameplay and that the whole voting block thing was just kind of temporary? Or have we actually seen an evolution in the game? I think the lines have been kind of drawn after the last tribal a little bit more um, with the split. I guess it was, what, 5-4 um, as far as the people voting. Um, so the lines seem they seem kind of more drawn, and it seems after that vote, it was uh, kind of confirmed who's on what side mm-hmm. more than ever. But it could all change. It's the season's been crazy. I thought it was interesting that you know, as far as like from a strategic standpoint, there's these voting blocks instead of alliances, so they don't actually trust one another that much. But then they were immediately thrust this past episode into having to trust each other for shelter, so they could like trust each other to like do what was right for the greater good like when it came to their shelter but not when it came to like their life in the game and i think that who did what was a tell on just how serious the game was and how serious about the conditions that they were in. exactly and we i was aside all strategic elements and for a good proportion over 80 percent of the players they were going towards shelter over individual benefits and, you know, I was going to bring that up later, but that was actually a really smooth transition, Ben. Um, you're going to be co-host next week. Anyways, so, Stephen, <laughs> let's talk about uh, this whole kind of idea of giving up a shot at immunity for shelter. Do you think it's kosher for Survivor to do that? Do you think Survivor should Absolutely. be interfering in that manner? Okay, explain. I mean, it, I agree it, with you, but I'm going to... It refers back to, the, like, the um, sort of the dilemmas that old school people had. Like, for example, in Australia, you had, you know, the food situation. What did they give up? They gave up, uh, I think it was their their entire shelter, or Colby's flag. I can't remember what... I think it was the entire thing. Mm-hmm. But it, it's not like it's new for trading one for another. And I think that making them ponder whether or not immunity is worth, you know, actually surviving and doing well out there I, I you know i don't think it i think it's good I, I like that it adds another layer to stuff so and at least it was like a bamboo shelter and it wasn't like what was that season where they had the have and have nots like, they, oh, yeah. like yeah. They, they didn't like give them like a tempurpedic bed and <laughs> all that kind of stuff they just put them um, in a hotel They're like you're in a hotel for the rest of the game yeah, yeah right? but <laughs> yeah. I, I was just gonna say um as cool as the shelter was i thought it was interesting that jeff said it was like one of the best ever because how soon he forgets in palau where karor won the challenge where you literally had the home depot come to like <laughs> build a house for them and it's like oh, it's like <laughs> sponsored content well, it was yeah or like when rupert once, built his underground so mansion like in the dark ages. <laughs> he doesn't you know really kind of look at that yeah. so i guess we all like- hashtags by shack yeah. And I think, okay, since we all agree that that was okay for Survivor to do, and I mean, I think we're all in the same school of thought that I am, which is, I want to see these people suffer, but I actually don't want to see them die. I don't want to see it be like in Survivor Australia and Survivor Africa, where everyone's just in so much pain that they can't really move. Jack, go ahead real quick. I think one part of it also is that Sierra is constantly bringing up how she couldn't really play the game with all that rain because everyone was sitting in the shelter and she couldn't have one-on-one conversations. Mm-hmm. So I think that... For certain players like Sierra, it had a strategic benefit, but it also benefited us as viewers because the game was no longer on pause or something like that. Very fair assessment. And Ben, I want to jump to you, but I also want to ask you, was that too low of a cost? Only five people sitting out? Or sort of like Jeff and like, all of you guys sit out and none of you get rewards for two weeks and I'm taking your dog when you get home. Should it have been something a lot more or was five people giving up immunity enough? I honestly think at that point in the game, with how the numbers are drawn at that point, it was a great juxtaposition for what the voting box and what was necessary to, like, it was a clear indicator that the conditions were so dire that it required everybody to go to that extreme and give up 
a million dollars for the sake of being in concrete sculpture. But I also think that that being developed as part of the season was a great move on production's point because it also furthered the storyline that allowed for another idol to be put into play which ended up being taken advantage of and we're gonna talk about that idol later because i actually i'm very fussy about that idol i don't like that idol i think that idol was shenanigan okay so uh alicia i haven't talked to you for a little bit how you doing um we had the reward challenge it was once again team rewards the first one that we saw which we all don't necessarily like but then they won and finally finally and I don't know, Alicia, this is the, you're the wrong person to ask, but we got a culture reward. We actually got to see some shit from the culture. Because for the past, who knows how many long seasons, it's been, oh, you win a reward. Here's a steak from Applebee's. Or here's a Survivor Starbucks. Like, just the most... I know, I feel like a lot of the past rewards have been like, here, go to this, like, village and give toys to children. Or, like, give them, like, pencils and soap. Pencils. <laughs> yeah, we did see that in San Juan del Sur and in Cagayan, but this was the first time it was more kind of like a, here, don't try to improve their culture, just, you know, watch their culture. <laughs> no, it was really enjoyable. Um, I thought when that one guy was balancing on those, like, two pipes that were twisted mm -hmm. around and was, like, skateboarding, I thought it was cool. Um, I wish that we could have gotten to see a little more of it and maybe focus less on, like, Sierra crying about her children. It was her send-off episode. Yeah. Was it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of stuff that, that was bleeding into tonight, so I forgive you on that one, Alicia. Okay, Patrick. I yes. want to talk with you about Steven, because Steven's not qualified to talk about Steven. As a fellow Steven, he's biased. <laughs> okay. Me and you, we're going we're gonna to have the Steven one-on-one, -on -one, then other people are going to jump in. What in the world was going on with Steven's edit, not just in tonight's two episodes, but as a whole? What in the world was his story? Why was he crying so much in one episode? Why was he reciting poetry in another episode? He was, he's the Lisa Welchel of this season. <laughs> Just the, the big crier. I don't know. Um, he, You know, I, I read something today about them trying to reinforce the second chance thing so much. And his big mistake was taking the golden boy to the end. And he was doing the exact same thing with Jeremy. Um, but... Yeah, that was that's his story, and they keep wanting to to reinforce that. And um, he got very emotional, and his feet were disgusting. Well, do you think he pissed <laughs> off the editors? And anyone can jump in at this point. Why why were we so Stephen crying so much? Because other people probably had breakdowns. I think that's probably. Oh my God, it was so sad and touching. It really continued to humanize him because we've seen him cry like from being so passionate um, a few episodes ago, which kind of juxtaposed with Spencer, who was like so robotic. So it was like it was really sad and like very moving to see him cry about like the fact that his body was literally shutting down and kind of betraying him. All I know is Steven cries more than I do and I'm not necessarily a big fan of that. Jack, I know you have to have a lot of opinions about Steven. What was I, going on with his edit edit? I wasn't upset like you seemed to be. I thought it was it was good to see that at one point he was like, I'm not gonna quit, I'm not gonna quit, I can't quit. It just shows how emotionally invested he is in the season and like playing Survivor. So it was really cool to see someone so passionate, as Alicia said. I don't know. I was fine with him crying and showing emotion. It's better than just having 100% strategy an entire episode. Um, so yeah, I was a, I I was plus, plus thumbs up for Stephen crying. I think anyone would cry if you're on Survivor. You haven't eaten. All you can have is water, and you have diarrhea. I mean, that's yeah. <laughs> Gastrointestinal. Okay, Steven. I'm sorry, yes. it's hashtag gastrointestinal <laughs> issues. Steven, real quick, Steven, real quick. What other survivors have had diarrhea and did they cry? Oh, God, I can't remember off the top of my head, but, but I'm sure they didn't they didn't cry. That's the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> hey, as a Steven that does cry a lot, I think it's fair. Like, well, I think Colin it's that fair does game. cry a lot, I just really hope they don't show it all into the TV show when I go on. <laughs> Colin, let's put you on there, give you really bad diarrhea, yeah. and it's raining for three days. For the six uh -huh. days that I'm on Survivor, I really hope they don't show me crying for all of it. Okay. <laughs> That's cute. You think you'd make it through the first tribal? No, my tribe wins immunity. Um, <laughs> Steven. Yes. The big center focus of this first episode we saw was Jeremy giving the hidden, wow, I can barely speak tonight, hidden immunity idol. I'm going to get it out really fast. To Stephen Fishback. And yes, that sent Sierra home. Was that a good move? And I mean, part of it was yeah. to the next episode, but even, yes? I think it was, because I think it reaffirmed the loyalty that he had with Stephen. 
Um, and I think that if he valued Steven in the game and he wanted Steven to realize that, he was going to play an idol on him. And he also, it's not like he doesn't have a second one to spare. So I think if it was just one idol, that's one thing. But he had two. So it's sort of like he knew he wasn't going home. Why not use one to save another ally? I completely disagree. And I and I figured that out even before the episode, uh, last second episode. Elise, Alicia, you wanted to go. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say that it was incredibly exciting and moving and thrilling and crazy that Jeremy played the idol. Secondly, I kind of have a question. Do we think that that is going to tip off a lot of other people that, hey, maybe Jeremy has a second idol and that's why he was so okay with using one not on himself the first time around? Anyone want to jump in? I think at least I would imagine... Like Jeremy as a second one based on that. I think it's yeah. that's a like question. super blasphemous that he would just like oh, he's got another one. He's got a third one. Like they're all so paranoid though, so maybe that might run through. Yeah, them. but well, I'm with Colin, and I'm saying that was a terrible move just because it it moved away from the the, the voting blocks, and it was more solidifying an alliance. And in the next episode, again, it showed them being so tight that was ultimately Stephen's demise, and, among other things. And much yeah. like the time when I had a hidden immunity idol in an org. The, you have to think kind of long term with it. It's like, yeah, I can play the idol and protect myself or protect an ally for one round. But what in the world's the point if all it's going to do is just put a huge target on my back or my ally's back? And the fact of the matter is that if Jeremy was in a position where that idol was needed to save Steven, that meant the tables have already turned against Steven. And it's like, do you, did he want to risk all of his cards into you know keeping Steven in the game? Just alienating people even more. He did. Sh- he did show too many. Like <laughs> yeah. so too many. His he showed his hand basically yes. by doing that. Okay, uh, Ben and then Stephen. Because I th- going off of what unraveled in the second episode, it was a case after that first idol move, they had secured themselves a solid four person crew at least with a final nine scenario. So. If they had not gone and played for the idol, that whole situation would not have happened. So I think it was a case of mismanagement with the second vote because I think that they knew that they had a solid four in that situation after the first vote. So I think that Jeremy's mood was solid because he knew that he had completely tied up a four person with nine people left in the game, which is almost enough to secure themselves all the way through. But it... it did kind of show who the four were and then there's the other five on the outside and that automatically gives them a you know five, you know which a, just a makes minute. question more why they decided to go with splitting it even further down than what the numbers that they had and the second vote with stevens admitted. yeah and, and i mean and I, and I agree i mean there is kind of a level of complexity that we're not seeing here but i guess that was my main thing is that jeremy may have you know okay us four look really good but fuck you, other five. And then be like, oh, wait, five is, in fact, a bigger number than four, so this isn't going to work out too well. They, okay. they went to the Brad Culpepper school of math. <laughs> I was yes. fixing the table. <laughs> Jack, how you been? We haven't spoken in a while. Good. What's up? Okay. So let's talk about the amazing reward challenge filled with nostalgia, filled with glee. I'm not going to ask Alicia about it because she probably doesn't even know when this challenge first was. But it was the story time challenge. And once again, it was rich in Cambodian culture. So as a super fan, just guide me through what it was like seeing this amazing challenge again. So when they walked in and it was all nighttime and all these torches were lit up, I was like, what, what, what's going on? Because usually all these challenges are during the day. And when they all lined up. It was a night. Yeah, it was just the whole theme and him telling the story and like the entire setting really built up. Not suspense, but it just made me super invested in watching this challenge and see who was going to win. And so I was real excited uh, with how it played out. And I'm sure someone else will mention Steven's little cheeky outplay on Abby that I thought was very hilarious. So well, rude. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't really catch that. Can someone, because I saw like parts so, of it. Go ahead. Basically, Steven gets to uh, one of the stations and he's reading the question. And I'm pretty sure he knows the answer. And Abby comes the second or two after him. And as, as soon as Abby gets there, he just picks up the middle container and doesn't grab anything, and Abby just instantly grabs the from the middle container and runs back, and he puts it back down and actually grabs the right answer, and he's like, oh, sorry, Abby. <laughs> so he, like, faked her out and made her believe it was the wrong one. That, that was very good. This is a situation where she has 
three out of the five discs yeah. already. So Abby is actually in contention for each individual. She was like walking around like, the first time in her life. When and Abby did win the immunity challenge in the Philippines, so the idea of her winning a challenge isn't necessarily that unfounded, right. especially when she came in second in the uh, Bermuda Triangle mm-hmm. yeah. um, challenge not uh, last week. Okay. So Steven, did you want to comment on the amazingness of I I was just yeah challenge? I was just gonna like jump in and be like fucking yes I was so excited <laughs> and um just to add to that I was hoping someone would channel the original Rudy Bosch and go I don't know at literally every station <laughs> yeah. but you know it, it was I was just so it warmed my heart to to see a story challenge because like I I think the last time we had one was. It might have been China, but if it wasn't that, it was like Guatemala. So mm-hmm. it's been. I know they did it in Guatemala. That's what I yeah. remember. Yeah, I think Guatemala was the last one I remember. So it was a long time That's ago. Like so it was ten clear. years, literally ten years. Ten years, Jesus! Yeah, I was Guatemala so was young back then. Okay, I was uh, so I was I hit, hit in the face with the torches. They're running around with fire. It seemed dangerous. I know. How was no, someone like not meta back at this? Point? I was waiting for. I was waiting for Stephen to actually set Joe's hair on fire. We got we got a whole bunch more yeah. stuff to cover, so we're gonna, we're gonna get back <laughs> just, to that. And just no, can we talk about the challenge a little more? And can we talk about that sly ass play where Steven We already lived? talked about that. Did that was really oh that. my gosh, Alicia. Clearly she was not listening, but okay, I was Alicia speaking. has not been paying attention. Alicia, you'll be barred from the next two questions. Um viewers, I'm currently drinking fireball from a wine glass, so please. That's what you're drinking. That's a cheer Damn. Too. And I've been I've been drinking Yingling since like noon, and I'm doing fine, so um Okay. Does anyone know why Jeremy had a cast on throughout part of the episode? Wait, is I that what? Right? He had like a, he had like an arm cast on his um, probably from. I his... think it was like an ace. It was. Either, it might have been covering up like a cut or something. Okay, you think it was a cut? So we we have no idea why he had that on because other yeah. people saw it, right? Jack, you saw it. Yeah, it's something. I don't know. I've had a lot of sports injury, injuries in the past, and it was like on his forearm, but mm-hmm. not like an entire portion covering a joint. So I don't know exactly. What kind of injury other than like the wound that that would be used for? But I'm not an expert. Don't... Maybe to prevent an infection or something? I don't know. That's actually a very, very good point. That's probably just a cut that they put on for it, um, you know, prevent, prevent infection. Someone brought up Kimmy. I literally have zero notes on Kimmy. So I'm just going to open up the floor and just let the Kimmy conversation go. Just so talk. just really quick, one of the one of the parts I liked about the first half of the episode – um, personally, was that we had a lot more character moments. So, like, for example, you see on the rewards here with the kids, and she just gets that really nice, sweet confession talking about how she misses her kids and her husband and her family. And then you go back to camp, and you see them, you know, trying to ride out the storm. And you just have this really nice Kimmy confessional talking about how all of her strength comes from her son at home, who's... I, I forget she said that he's battling a disease. I forget what she said it was. But I just thought it was a really nice, humanizing moment, and it made me remember why I love Survivor is because I like hearing about these people, their lives and their stories, and like why they're out there. So, so, so when Colton is like, hey, I have a black maid, you're like, that's what, those are the kind no, of No, not quite, I'm not just, quite. I'm giving you a hard time. Not, not, yeah, I know, but <laughs> yeah. I just like it when we get humanizing like stories from home. It, 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 it warms my heart. I, See, and it made me think that Kimmy was going to go home because we that finally, was what our discussion was. we finally saw some insight into Kimmy and we were like, oh, she's a goner. We were having a discussion during the first episode because Kimmy and Jim both had, um, Jim, Jim, Keith. (laughs) Here we go. He's the last Uh remaining member on my fantasy team. You show him some damn respect, Uh okay, Ben? Okay. Well, the both, Kimmy and Keith, two people that haven't really been featured at all this season, both fought confessionals that had some emotional depth to them, which made me think that they were being put like as parallels for a vote for that tribe. Well, well, Ben, I am going to cut you off right now because I actually I was going to throw the next question at you. And we're going to go in a completely different direction, all right? <laughs> and we're going to be talking about Kelly Wentworth and the idol. Okay. No. So, the beginning of this season, you went searching for an idol. You hunted everything. You lifted up rocks. You fought a bear. And then you got the clue, and the clue said, hey, the next immunity challenge in front of everybody, stab a lion in the heart and take the idol clue out. Basically, you had to do something in front of everybody, and it was super dangerous, super risky. Now, these people are finding these idol clues in the merge, and it's like, 
go to a place where there's a light, and here's the idol. And Wentworth <laughs> is, look under the shelter whenever you can. Doesn't this kind of diminish the whole search of the idols? And also the fact that this idol clue was just in a random part of the reward challenge means no one had to work for it. That is shenanigans. I'm sorry. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. It's going to be Jack and then Steven. So, yeah, I'll start with the fact that basically since they put the um, idol in the correct answer of a challenge, it was 99% sure someone's going to find it. And then they put it in a spot where it was going to be found underneath the shelter. So basically they're force feeding another idol into the game, which I'm not a fan of. Um, but at first when Kelly opened her clue, I thought it was going to be one of those, like, because the way she, the phrasing was at the beginning, it seemed like it's going to be another challenge thing. So I thought she was going to get super ripped off when Jeremy got an easy one. But I think they said did such a great job in the first portion of the season where you had to find him in challenges. And now they're just, like, copping out. And just, like, <laughs> handing him to players. I wish they would have stuck with, like, something that we really liked at the beginning. Well, it, maybe it should be, like, a series of idle clues at this point in the game to make it worth it. Because, honestly, it does seem like the art department's just, like, fuck it. Just put it uh, yeah. in, in, a, in, in, the, in a goat, in the goat statue. Steve, <laughs> did you want to jump in? I was just going to say, when you were talking about the idol sort of being diminished, I was like... To me, like, I feel like idol hunts have always sort of just diminished the show because it was just like a glorified scavenger hunt for me. It's like, ooh, where are they going to find it next? Is it going to be in this tree? Is it going to be under that rock? Like, ooh, I mean, I appreciate that they that she had to go like under the shelter for it. But I, I don't know. I just, if you're going to do something with idols, I just want something different than the same rehashed scavenger hunt person. And I guess my problem necessarily isn't even the scavenger hunt or even that we have one every season. It's the fact that we keep having one every episode. And Alicia, you want to yeah. jump in on this? Yeah, so what didn't make sense to me was obviously Jeremy had two idols. An idol he found during tribal phase and then another one he found during the merge. Yeah, we talked about this last episode, but I'm glad you brought it up. Keep going. So he so he plays one of his idols in the first episode and then suddenly there's a new one that's repla that replaces it. Obviously to me, he's playing his tribal found idol yeah. because he found it first. So I don't understand the need to immediately replace another idol because to me there's still there's still an active uh, idol. There's still an active idol from the merge phase of the game. And yeah. so for them to just toss on another idol, like it just doesn't make any sense to me and it just feels kind of forced and like exactly. they're just trying to add more Survivor shit. Survivor the past 10 seasons, they love well, idols. Well, Patrick, I think it wasn't until Heroes vs. Villains where we had the you know, more than one active idol in the merge setting. And that that was that happened, you know, past tribal idols being played. And Alicia, yeah. I agree with you 100%, because honestly, to me, it's not even fair to people that have hidden immunity idols if it's like, okay, I worked my butt off to find the merge hidden immunity idol, and then suddenly now everyone else can get it. And, you know, you're Jeremy, you worked your butt off to find the first idol, and you worked kind of hard for to find the second idol, and then Wentworth gets an idol literally basically handed to her because it happened in the reward challenge. It's right. There. So it's not even it, to me. It's literally unfair to the survivor players to make the idols this easy to find. And anyone that want to disagree with me and well, not be on the podcast yeah, anymore? Like usually, <laughs> a merge. I'm oh, sorry. Usually, sure. a merge idol. A lot of the clues will be at the merge feast. So everyone has the same chance of finding it as long as everyone's kind of poking around and looking. Mm -hmm. But when it's literally in one medallion in one reward challenge it just is it's literally completely up to chance yeah. and and i don't agree with that i like the idea like say what you will about tony at least tony hustled for those idols and if you believe like me that russell wasn't you know helped out by production russell hustled for those idols so there's a lot to be said and i do think I don't anyone can jump in on this but there's this i don't know i'm really not liking all the twists this season i think they're they're getting too many when they already have such a good I cast I think another option is just to not have idols in a game for a few seasons and keep people on their toes, but I guess that's not happening. So. Well, I think they could just have the one idol. At least there's not Redemption Island. No. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Um, so, we've talked about the idol. None of us really seems to like it. I want to actually kind of take a step forward and bring up the idea of what is going on with the game now? Where do people stand? What's, what are the alliances looking like? And anyone can jump in on this, because to be frank, I don't have that much insight. Uh, ben, did you want to say something? I just want to point out, like, something that I took away from the last vote is that 
I was very intrigued that with all the talk about focus on Joe because he's such an individual threat, there was nothing towards him. And I think that's a bit telling that they decide to go with the easy route with Abby Maria rather than focusing on Joe when that could have been something that people could have rallied behind. What wasn't the intention to get Joe out though, but and Abby was just uh, to split the votes in case he had an idol? Yes. Mm-hmm. Did Joe get votes? Yeah. Joe Joe <laughs> got a few votes. Um, so does anyone here? <laughs> Not enough, I'm though. sorry, I just remembered, yeah, Fishback's, like, crazy confessional being like, Joe, you're oh, you're voting for yourself right now. Yeah. And that's when Ben turned to me and was like, fuck, they wouldn't be showing that if Joe yeah. was actually going yeah. home. Basically, okay. yeah. Ugh. What I wanted to bring up and ask is... Thanks, I lost my train of thought. Oh, no, this I didn't lose my train of thought. It's Joe. Steven. Was it a good idea to vote out Steven instead of Joe? Because to me, no. you know Steven's a schemer. You're no. a schemer, Steven. I, I thank you. But um, Joe's going to win all the immunity, so it doesn't matter anyways. Well, I think on top of that, like, it, am I the one who thought Joe came off? Like, I don't want to say like a little entitled last night, but like, or the, tonight rather. But like, in the second half of the episode, he seemed like it was like, how dare they try to vote me out? And it was like, girl, like, what are you doing? But I, I don't think, I uh, I thought Joe should have gone. I thought it made sense to get rid of Joe. I, ugh, I'm, I'm, I liked Joe when he was on his revenge for Wigglesworth quest, but now he's over that and I'm kind of over him. So he can go. I don't think he seemed entitled. I think he thought he was screwed when he didn't get immunity. He's like, I'm, you know, I'm in trouble. I've, he's actually had a confessional saying, that, like, for the first time, I'm actually really scared because I'm not safe. And I'm going to say, I do agree with Patrick that I think Joe, yeah, I can see how it could come off as being kind of I, entitled. but I, think I, I should say whiny like, rather yeah, than entitled. Whiny's very effective. He was kind of like Luke Skywalker being like, I want to go to Tashi Station and pick up some power converters. And I am going to try to get that into every single episode of this season of the podcast. <laughs> me saying that. Okay. But, Patrick, was it a good move to get rid of Steven over Joe? Wait, does anyone think that it, it was... It depends on who you are, though. Um, okay, like, who's it better for? Because Joe beats all the girls in the end. Um, I I don't know. I, I I'm necessarily not sure that's no, that. not necessarily. Sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Wentworth, Wentworth has played a really strong Wentworth game. Has a lot more strategic clout. Wentworth would beat him. All the other girls know. I, I think I actually don't think Joe puts up a great that's case at the end. All he can yeah, say is that he uh, wins uh, challenges. He didn't have to do any of the other aspects of the game. He didn't have to make really any alliances or social bonds. We just had to win. He but, didn't. He didn't save his own ass tonight. They someone right. else dug their own hole. Or but didn't their own grave. Mike just win worlds apart under the exact same but, guys? And, Mike, and but, Joe has a better social game than Mike. I would argue. But People like Joe more. No. Okay. Well, one no. Two. Uh, one. Yeah, Steven, go ahead. I'm. 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 Yeah, I'm defending. Steven Layman so bringing salty. the pain. Yeah, Steven, come uh, on. Um, I, I think the problem I think the problem with Joe getting to the end is that he's known for, he's too one note as a challenge threat. I think with Mike, he had at least a solid alliance before they sort of flipped on him. And I think on top of that, Joe, as likable as he is, he has more likable people with him. I think with Mike, he okay. So, under- so who yeah. beats Joe in final? Okay, you guys Wentworth? think Kelly Wentworth can? I think yeah. Wentworth does. I think Jeremy does. Yes. Yeah, um, um, Wentworth and Jeremy. Spencer May. And Spencer. Cook. I think. Yeah. I think. I, as mu- as people don't want to see it, I think Kimmy could have a shot. She's likable. She's got no. friends. See, no Steven, the edit <laughs> says <laughs> absolutely not. Both for se- okay, fine. <laughs> I, 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 I think, okay, so I think Jeremy does, Wentworth does. I think Spencer does as much as I wouldn't necessarily like it. I would throw um, Tasha in the maybe column for possibly beating Tasha him. Tasha goes in the maybe because column. Because she has a strong play. early game. It like, depends on thing, though. how she plays the rest of the game. I think Tasha yeah. could, yeah. But if you look at the current makeup of the jury, Cass loves Joe. She just Savage, hates Tasha. Savage loves Joe. Savage so, I mean, that's Tasha. already two Tasha votes right there. Tasha and Savage were like that. Yeah, they were like that since day one. Yeah. As much so, as- I mean, so, I mean, it all depends on the makeup. But what I think is, I think you guys are saying like, hey, Joe wouldn't necessarily do well. I think Joe, kind of like any Democrat in the Electoral College, has a huge advantage going into it. Yeah, they can't be beaten, but there's a lot of, you know... A lot of I things have to go because I think that a lot of people will look at look at Joe and see him solely as a physical player, right. and they discount anything else that he does. I think they see him as a physical threat playboy and don't doesn't really consider him anywhere strategically. And, and so I, I think that's say... good. Go ahead, Alicia. 
I will say that this um, the second episode where he survived the vote, despite getting his uh, vote taken from him and still survived it, will give him a little more clout when it comes to the argument of social gameplay and having allies and strategy. However, right now the narrative is still completely... You're, you had to win the challenges or else you were screwed and not if, make a real survivor because, yeah. Yeah. If he got to the yeah. end, and someone I'm, undoubtedly yeah. is going to ask, you know, what big move did you make? And Joe's going to say, answer. I didn't have to make a big move because I knew you would I, all cannibalize each other. Well, I don't think it's necessarily about big moves. I think it's about more things like social bonds and but you know advancing that stuff. But, but Stephen, I guess that's where I think me and you are having this little bit of a kind of a conflict because – Every single week we get secret scenes of Cass saying, um, Joe is so great, I want to marry Joe. Kelly but, Worth is saying, Joe is so great, I want to marry but Joe. They're, they're, saying, they're saying that in the context of his uh, outdoorsmanship and his yes, abilities but, to sort of survive. And, and I guess what I say is I think that does matter to a jury. It may not matter as yeah. a strategic prowess, but that but, is going to carry some weight. But I think there's a difference between someone being able to survive in the wild and someone having great interpersonal relationship with people. I think well, Joe's certainly likable. I think he's certainly great at, you know, the surviving aspect and the physical aspect. I don't know how great he is at ingratiating okay. himself with us. I'm going to make the last comment, then we have to move on. I will say, I think, where he disagrees, I think Joe helping them so much in the survival aspect helps his interpersonal relationships. And I think what you're saying is that doesn't really matter too much. Anyways, we do have to move on because we've been talking about the same thing. For so so long, but we had the everyone loves Joe. We had the feats immunity challenge today, and Joe finally went down. Are we a fan of the feats immunity challenge? I'm just gonna say I'm gonna point to you, and you're gonna say yes or no. Ben, yes or no? Are you a fan? I okay. have a no with an X. Like, can I have a hyphen? No, you cannot. At least yeah. Damn it. No. Steven. Too many feet. <laughs> yes, because Baylor won it. Okay, Jack. No, I'm not a feet person. Patrick, you're not. <laughs> Patrick, are you a feet person? Uh, no, no comment. I don't really care. Okay, so we're not Quentin Tarantino. No, no, no. Don't have that, not a no, a no comment. <laughs> we don't have that uh, foot fetish thing going on. Okay, the other challenge we saw today before, you know, the one where the girls all decided to sit out and it was Joe and Keith, well, really everyone inside, so sorry, was another endurance challenge. So all we've had in terms of individual like immunity endurance challenges is... Endurance and feet, Ben. What do you want to say that's so bad? Because to me, there would be I want to say that the challenge. I want to say that the challenge producers need to come up with something better, because at this point, we've gone through the merge with every single muni challenge being an endurance challenge, Besides except for the feet competition. It's endurance. It's semi-dance. balance, and there's a yeah. ball. Yeah. I, there's I'm no so creativity. Over it. Okay, go ahead, Stephen. I think if they are doing endurance, I want old endurance back. I want the perch back. I want yes, like I want hand up in the air with barrel full of color. Uh, I can I can deal without that. But I, I want, want like giant back. pole with the tiny foot holds and you slip down it. I like, want literally anything. balancing one foot on a pole, 10, 15 feet in the Amazon jungle, asking if you want to get off or peanut butter yes. at this point. That would be yes. a good one. I do yeah. like that one. Ben, you win this part of the podcast tonight. Too. I I would take my clothes off for chocolate and peanut butter. I wouldn't, but. Anyways, so Ben, you probably will be co host next week. So, <laughs> taking all things into consideration, a point I tried to bring up earlier, but Jack, me and you, we're going to talk one on one about this. Okay. You didn't even look up at your webcam when I said that. That kind of hurt your feelings a little bit. <laughs> you didn't even acknowledge me. Side eye in the upward <laughs> direction. Okay. So, who's being voted out next? Where are things standing in terms of survivors' second chances? Where do you think stand? What's going to happen? We don't know. I think, even though it should have happened this past, I don't know. I think it's, I'm just, I thought I was going to be Joe, but it wasn't Joe. Yeah. So I'm just, my like brain is still, get out Joe. Get out I Joe. think since Spencer kind of led this vote last round, well, he played a vocal part in it. I do think now that Steven's gone, the first chance he gets, Spencer's going to cut Joe's throat. And I think Spencer is getting a very similar edit to Jeremy. And Spencer could be our winner, in fact. Ben, go ahead, right ahead. I'm going to go on a limb. From what I've been seeing from the beginning of the series is Joe's arc has been him making it to the Loved Ones Challenge. And he, oh, you're right. with the preview, has made it to the Loved Ones Challenge. And I think that is going to be his arc. 
So I'm going to go on a limb and say that it's going to be Joe next round because the numbers are getting scarce. I think that there's going to be filler left in there for a little bit longer. I think that this is his time to get out. And I'm yeah. like, I don't know if, if the uh, listeners can hear this, but I am in fact clapping my hands because I do think Ben might have just nailed that on the head. For I mean, the yeah. third thing tonight, he has nailed this on the head. No, but that's not an analogy I want to use. Okay, so before we wrap things up, is there anything we missed that is extremely pertinent to the future of Survivor Second Chances? Or does anyone have any soapboxes they would like to stand on? Steven, do you want to argue with me over stuff somewhere? Okay, nope. it's going to be Jack and then Patrick. Jack, go ahead. All right, so these comments aren't exactly pertinent to the future and integrity of the game. But I want to get your guys' opinion on Andrew Savage and the BB. <laughs> okay, real quick. Andrew, Andrew Savage on the beanie, yes or, or no? Yes or no? Steven, Andrew Savage in the beanie. No. Patrick, Andrew Savage in the beanie. He looks like he's like an old dude trying to play <laughs> yes someone. Or no. Like yes or no. I love no. it. Okay, love Alicia, yes or no? I love it. He's... Ben, yes or no? Me and her were discussing it. We thought he cut his age in half with the beanie on. And I'm saying yes. Also, I think he looks kind of cool. I would, I would go skateboarding with him because that's, that's the coolest legit, way of it. Legit, I think he looks. I don't skateboard, but I would go. Okay. Any other soapboxes? I think Alicia. Yeah, I had a, I had a okay, question. Patrick had a question. Yes. Um, do y'all think Sierra would have had a chance in that immunity challenge if she had played in it? No, the not Fina? against Joe and Keith. Pro- oh, oh, the uh, no, not in that one. I think she could have. I think I, I'm of the I'm also of the opinion. By the way, I would have sat the she hell has out of that. Spindly arms, like she yeah. would not have been able to. Yeah. Also, how is Abby still in the game? <laughs> oh, I want to comment on that. That actually is kind of funny. Um, luck, because to be honest, all the people left in the game, like Kelly Wentworth and maybe Spencer, would be the only two that I would pitch as still lasting this long. I kind of I kind of see her as um she's untouchable now because everyone wants to sit next to her in the end. Unless she gets too flippy floppy and they decide to slit her throat at final five. Which is on this episode. Okay. Alicia, did you want to say something before we wrap things up? Yeah, but I think Jack might have had a comment about this. Did you? No, another soapbox. Oh, okay. okay. Um, I wanted to discuss next episode. episode. Could we tell by the shaking man hand who is getting medical okay. attention? Oh, yeah. To me, it looked like it was an older male's hand, which led me to believe that it was, in fact, Keith. Uh, However... We do have a whole bunch of loved ones coming. Is it oh, yeah, possible true. that a loved one could get oh, kind of hurt and injured? God. Do it we was, think that one dead. of those Cambodian idols that was being balanced on a pole landed on someone's head? That's what I no. Yeah. no. No? I think it's heat stroke. Oh. Really? I thought so, I thought someone got hit on the head. Well, actually, that's I feel like that's probably what it did. What it did was in a shelter. Yeah, it's it probably... Was- Wow, yeah, Alicio, way to go. It was in the shelter. I saw somebody with his back relaxed on wood. But that could be... Not it in could, water. It could still be but, a, it could still be a family member. Right. By the way, next week's immunity, I think it's still another endurance. Oh, they would have brought him on. <sighs> it's All the right. pole one where you, put, where you stick the sections of the pole on each other and you're holding the idol up. It's the final four one from Samoa. Yeah. Uh, the one from Redemption Island that Semhar lost. Or South Pacific, but yeah. South Pacific. All right. So, with all of that being said, I think we did a great job of dissecting this double episode of Survivor. I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. I want to thank you all for listening. And also, do not go buy stuff on Thanksgiving and Black Friday. Just don't do it. Just don't. Buy it online in your underwear. Exactly. Buy it online in your underwear. That might be the name of tonight's episode. (laughs) So, with that being said, goodbye, everybody. Have a good